Hello! Uh, today we will be talking about all the books I read in January of 2023. And I know some of you are thinking, Stacy, you haven't talked about your 2022 books yet. And technically I have talked about those books. Running into some technical difficulties with editing that video. Um, my husband is actually editing it for me because it is a longer video and we're having some problems trying to get it together. Uh, but since I decided this year, I'm going to do it every single month. Please help me hold myself accountable to that. Uh, I figured I would just edit and post this one and talk about the books I read in January. So let's uh, go ahead and get into it. The first book I read in January is called There Is No Good Card for This by Kelsey Crow and Emily McDowell. Whether it's a coworker with an ongoing divorce, a friend with a deceased parent, or a family member with a diagnosis, this book shows you the best way you can be some, how you can be with someone who is in need. Uh, I gave this book four stars. Uh, I read this book because one of my challenges this year is to diversify your genre reading. So technically this is a self-help book. So I read it for that challenge. Um, I really thought it was a good look in how to be more empathetic when speaking to others, especially about hard topics. In the field that I work in, I have to talk to people who are sometimes going through a lot of emotional challenges. So this really helps me kind of remind myself, even in my own life, how to be more empathetic to people. And you can always sh strive to be better in that way. Then I read No One Left to Come Looking for You by Sam Lipsty. Set in 1993, this novel follows the main character, Jack, as he tries to find his roommate slash fellow bandmate who stole his bass guitar. His journey quickly turns dark as he under, uncovers some crime and interesting characters along the way. Um, I gave this book three stars. I did like parts of this book, um, but overall I felt like I needed either more from the story or less from the story, which is kind of hard to explain without reading it. Um, some of the characters were not very likable and the writing kind of felt forced at times, which took me out of the story. Uh, there, an example of this, which isn't really a spoiler, but what, the main character is talking to this girl in the bar. He goes into the bathroom and somebody had, you know, took the kids to the pool and kind of left it smelling a little bad. And... He comes out and runs straight into the girl he had been talking to at the bar. And the girl's like, I really like you. And he's like, I'm sorry about the smell. It wasn't me. And she like kisses him. And then she like is still smelling it. And she's just looking at him. He's like, I swear it's not me. It's like, why was this necessary to the story? It was like the weirdest thing I ever read. I hated it, really. <laughs> um, so besides that, you know. There were interesting parts. It was set in New York City, so it was kind of cool to see them running around 90s New York City. Um, but yeah, it wasn't for me. Then I read People Person by Candace Carty Williams. Dimple knew of her half-siblings, but didn't really know them until now. Nothing in common except their abandonment issues from their dad. They are forced together upon a dramatic event in Dimple's life. Um, I gave this book three stars. Uh, Candace Cardi Williams actually wrote Queenie, which you guys know I loved. Um, so kind of going into this, I expected maybe similar type of story. Not story, but similar type of writing. Um, but I feel like with this, like, you're really just, like, forced into the story. You don't really get backstory on any of the characters, which I felt was needed, especially upon the dramatic event happens like really fast into the story and you're kind of like oh is this what the book is about and that actually turns out not to be what you're thinking it's so it's interesting um and I really did like the relationships with each other I just wish we would have got to know everyone by themselves before we got to know them all together um it just felt a little bit all over the place but I think it was still a pretty good book then I read Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? by Lizzie Dam Lola Blackburn. 
by Lizzie Damalola Blackburn. Yinka is a 30-something Oxford-educated British-Nigerian woman with a well-paid job, good friends, and mother who constantly asks when she's going to get married. Her family consistently prays for her to find a good man. Her work friends think she's too traditional, and her friends think she's not over her ex. When her cousin gets engaged, Yinka feels pressured to find a wedding date. And it kind of just got, talks about that whole story. So I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I felt the characters were real and the relationships were interesting. The story was really about being okay with yourself and finding love um, with yourself before you find love with anyone else. I really enjoyed reading about the cultures that were presented in the book. Um, gave you an insight into cultures that you might not have personal relationships with. And then I also um, just really liked the characters overall. I do wish the growth of the characters happened a little sooner in the story. I felt like we were getting a lot of like stagnant um, character growth, but I really did like how it turned out. Then I read The Ready-Made Thief by Augustus Rose. Lee Cuddy is 17 years old and on the run. Betrayed by her family after taking the fall for a friend, Lee finds refuge in a co-op of runaways in an abandoned building. The facade of the location conceals a more sinister agenda than she realizes, and she might hold the key to it all. I give this three stars. Um, kind of mixed feelings about this one because... Elements were great. Like, I really liked the abandoned type feeling of the story and how they were exploring this, like, underground atmosphere. But I feel like the mystery part was a little too complicated to follow because it was, like, tying in art and history. And it wasn't very interesting to follow after a while. And you're just kind of like... At least for me, I was kind of just trying to skim past some of it because I was just like, I don't really care about this so much anymore. Then I read The Poison Garden by Alex Marwood. So if you remember, I got this one at a library book sale. Definitely didn't mean to just drop it. <laughs> um, this is about Romy, who is a recently removed from a cult and pregnant and completely alone in a new world. I gave this four stars. Uh, the third act really made up for this book, but I wish it had delved more into the background of the cult. It was more so talking about like what was happening now that they were outside the cult, which I guess is what the plot is, but I wish we could have got more of the background, especially with how the book ended. And a little sneak preview of my cat who's trying to sneak in here. Then I uh, read A Lifetime of Secrets, a post-secret book by Frank Warren. And I actually picked this up at High Price Books with a uh, gift card that I got. So Frank Warren invites people of all backgrounds to send him creatively decorated postcards that contain a secret. And he usually posts this on his blog, but he has also made um, a few books out of the secrets. Um, I really have loved following Post Secret. I'm really glad I own one of the books now. It's kind of like a coffee table book almost. And uh, I like to see all the different artist expressions. I like to read the secrets. If you have some time and you don't want to like buy it for yourself, I would definitely suggest getting it from the library or checking it out. Um, just some examples, you know, there's an example page. So it's a very quick read. You know, Phoenix really wants to be in here. Um, you know, they have very cool books in there or secrets in the book. Then I reread In Five Years by Rebecca Surley. Where do you see yourself in five years? Type A lawyer Danny is asked this question and thinks she has her whole life planned out to a T. But when she wakes up in the future for one hour, she is thrown to see a different life than the one she planned. Once back in the present, she tries to move past what she saw and sticks to her plan, but fate is fate. 
Uh, the first time I read this book, I actually only gave it four stars, but upon rereading, it's a five star baby. Uh, I think that the emotions in this book hit me harder this time, maybe because the first time I read it, I was expecting a different outcome, um, which I honestly did forget the ending of this book, but when I was reading it, it kind of was like, oh yeah, that's what happened, and, um... You know, I'm really glad I gave this book a second chance and I fell in love with it again. And then I read The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This is another reread. Soon after her 25th birthday, Libby finds out she is inheriting a home from her birth family and everything is going to change. Police were called to the home 25 years earlier and discovered three people dead and a baby crying. Three families living in a house full of secrets and you know it goes to where Libby is now an adult and she's trying to figure out what happened in the house um I would say I would give this book four stars maybe like 3.5 I actually read it in 2020 so I kind of forgot that I read it um and I reread it for because uh my mom bought me the sequel for Christmas so I was like well I need to reread this so I can read the sequel I liked elements of the book, but overall, I felt like there were too many characters to follow. And then also some of the characters changed names, which was kind of hard to follow too. Uh, besides all that, I felt like the writing was lacking. It didn't really have the Lisa Jewell twist that you know and love. Um, so yeah, so then we're going to talk about the one I read right after that, The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. So early one morning on the shores of the Thames, Detective Samuel Owuso is called to the scene of a gruesome discovery, a bag of bones, which is connected to a cold case that left three people dead in the Chelsea mansion. So this book I would give three stars. I don't really feel like we needed a sequel to The Family Upstairs. I felt like the writing was lacking again. I didn't care about the characters enough to get a sequel. I guess other people did, but I didn't. Um, I did like the addition of a character that they added, the addition of Rachel, because the other characters just felt tired. Then I read Shudder by Ramona Emerson. Rita is a forensic photographer who is haunted by spirits. One of the spirits is tied to her desperately trying to prove a wicked cop killed her and others. I give this book four stars. We actually read this for like my family's book club. I really enjoyed the beginning of the book and the poetic language and it really just like shoves you right into the writing of the story. I did feel like it faltered a little bit towards the middle of the book with that language and towards the end of the book it just kind of more felt like regular. But I thought the plot and the story were pretty interesting, even though I don't really like to read about, like, bad cops or cops in general. But I thought it was pretty interesting. And then the last book I read in January was a reread, and it is Beach Read by Emily Henry. And I actually got this at Half Price Books as well. And this is about a romance writer who is no longer believing in love and a literary writer who is stuck in a rut and they engage in a summer long challenge to write each other's genres and then they take each other on like adventures suited to the uh, task so as a romance writer the main character will take the literary writer on like dates like they go to a theme park almost and he's a literary writer so he takes her to where like a cult was so it's kind of like different genres and homework basically uh I really did I say four stars okay I really enjoy Emily Henry's writing and characters um sometimes it does feel like it's maybe trying a little hard so that's why it doesn't get the five stars from me but I really do enjoy the story and I'm glad I picked this up even though it was interesting when I bought this from half price books it says for sale in the Indian subcontinent only so I'm not really sure why it says that so if anybody knows I'm curious um 
about it. I have price books. So, uh, those are all the books that I read in January. So I read 12 books total in January and my goal this year is 75 again. So let me know what I should read this year and let me know if you've read any of these and I will see you next time.